Uh, next up, please welcome Cloudware. Presenting will be Evan Tan and Wendell Brown. Take it away. Every 24 hours, more than a quarter million people are hacked. It looks something like this. And with maps like this one, it's really easy to lose sight of the personal loss from every hacking event. But we don't have to look far. Companies we all know and use are being hacked. Uber was hacked, Slack was hacked, and Dropbox had 7 million accounts stolen just last year. The fact is that as a community, we have been unable to stem this tide. It's clear that the biggest problem in security today is that good security is too much of a pain to use. For instance, we all know two-factor authentication is great and makes us more secure, but how many of us actually opt in and start using it? In most websites, it's fewer than 1%. And any security system where 99% of your users refuse to use it doesn't really protect the masses as it needs to. So with cyber attacks on the rise, it's clear we need to stop making users decide between convenience and security. What we need is a zero friction addition that works in the background to keep all of our users safe. My company Cloudware is built exactly that. We're from Google, Microsoft, and SpaceX. We've built software for the US Department of Defense and for millions of users of Fortune 500 companies. So we know what it takes to keep users safe online. And we're so excited here today to use that experience to make a difference solving the very real problem of cybersecurity on the web with a solution that's faster and easier than 2FA, encompassing the same ideas that we presented on the main global stage of TED earlier this year. This is the first time that we're giving everyone a glimpse of the product itself. Let's look at an example. I'm going to log into my GitHub account online. Unlike two-factor authentication, which requires a six-digit code, Cloudware is going to log me in instantly because it works in the background. So with that in mind, let's take a look at just how easy it is for the user. On the left-hand side, you'll see Cloudware, and on the right-hand side, you'll see traditional two-factor authentication. So you're in with Cloudware, but if you use two-factor authentication, you're still waiting. Now, that looks really simple on the surface. And like all great products, it's simple for the user, with a lot of deep technology being used underneath. Because when I entered my username and password, Cloudware used, checked my mobile phone's location, even though I was on my desktop. Cloudware checked my mobile phone's location to grab my GPS coordinates at the moment. And using my GPS coordinates, it's able to determine whether or not I should have access to my account right now, just on whether or not I'm in an acceptable, reasonable location to be accessing that service in a much more secure way than IP address alone. Now, the reason why this small, simple change has such a massive impact is because 98% of all hacks originate from overseas. 98%. So what Cloudware does is it ensures that even after my username and password are stolen, I'm still protected from those 98% of attacks that occur today. Now that we've seen how, a, how it looks to the user, that is, they largely don't even know it's there, let's take a look at how a company can configure and deploy Cloudware. We have a visual map-based interface to control re regions, locations, where you can access Cloudware from. Uh, so let's take a look at how one of America's leading enterprises would use this. SpaceX faces hundreds of thousands of attacks every day from Russia, China, and North Korea. Now, their employees are trying to access, in, access SpaceX critical infrastructure and data from the headquarters. So let's go ahead and whitelist the headquarters building to give them access within that physical space. And just like that, the CIO just got in. Now there's a warehouse across the street as well. So let's whitelist that area too. Now SpaceX is a growing company. It has a new satellite division in Seattle and launch sites at Cape Canaveral. So rather than concern ourselves about each individual place, let's simply whitelist the entire United States allowing access from this country and none other, in keeping with ITAR export restrictions. So now you can see Cape Canaveral and the Seattle uh, Satellite Division getting in just fine. Now there's also a recovery ops engineer out recovering a rocket in the Atlantic. Rather than open up a permanent a whitelist in the Atlantic, let's give him temporary access. So we'll grant him access to SpaceX systems within a 20-mile radius for a period of five days. 
and following that, the access will disappear altogether. Now that we've seen how a company can deploy and configure Cloudware, let's talk about integration. Cloudware offers a simple mobile SDK that integrates into any existing enterprise's mobile applications. That works in the background to grab your phone's GPS coordinates as you attempt to log into any corporate service, whether through Active Directory or others. We also offer a web-based interface like you just saw, or direct API level access to configure acceptable locations for your business. So if you don't do business in Kazakhstan, you can block the country off your list. We're so excited today to announce that Cloudware is currently available to companies like SpaceX and others. But we're making it available to, with a general release soon. Before that happens, go to cloudware.com, that's W-E-A-R.com, and sign up for early access. You'll be the first to know. I'm Evan Tan. This is my co-founder, Wendell Brown. And we're building a world free from cybercrime. Thank you. All right. Great job. I just want to make sure I understand it properly. When I go to log in, once I hit submit, you actually ping my phone, and you're hitting a piece, of, a piece of your software that's running on my phone to make sure that the coordinates that that app is reporting uh, are of the, you know, you're in the appropriate location. Is that correct? That's exactly right. Okay. It's a, it's a pretty elegant solution. How protectable do you feel that it is? Because obviously people have commingled location and security and authentication together for a while. So, you know, do you think that either there's existing IP that you might be stepping on, or do you think this is sufficiently protected that that other IP, um, you know, can't allow the owners of that IP to sort of do what you're doing? Absolutely. Wendell, do you want to discuss some of the innovations? Sure. Well, there's three key innovations. The first one is integrating the IP address with the GPS and doing that at scale in real time. And the second is on our back end, we're integrating a highly secure, highly scalable back end. Um, and then thirdly, we also have many patents. I've, I've written many hundreds of patents before, and so we've been very aggressive at patent protection as well as searching prior patents as well. I have a couple of edge case questions. Uh, one, why wouldn't someone just assume you're working from your office and spoof your location? So that's a great point. And in fact, GPS itself is typically very easy to spoof. If you use yes. Android, yeah. you can enable developer mode and set your location to appear to be anywhere in the world. Uh, with our SDK, we can actually identify you attempting to manipulate lo your location. Mm, okay. And if we see that happening, we disregard whatever you're sending us. OK. Uh, and then one of the biggest applications of this for me, for me personally, would be trying to get to log into AOL enterprise software on, a, on an airplane. And on an airplane, you don't actually know where my phone's location is because it's off. So what happens then? Yeah, I mean, we've looked at that application. I mean, that's a very small percent of the time. Uh, but, we, but you can enable, we have an administrative panel where you can enable exceptions for certain periods of time. So you could enable access to you, and you could enable the access before you depart and access it and enable it for a certain number of hours to enable access from an airplane. OK, thank you. What's the setup time like to have the SDK installed, or how does it work across various apps you may be using? Absolutely. So uh, we only need the SDK integrated into a single enterprise application uh, that, the, that the user of the enterprise would have. So the enterprise integrates the software itself. It's a few lines of code, easy to do, with a lot of documentation and support provided. Uh, they distribute it to their companies using their existing MDM platform. And in a matter of minutes, all enterprise employees now have this capability. Um, it's elegant. Uh, it, well, first, how, how are you pricing it? So we price it based on two different models. The first is for a small to medium business. They're more interested in the map-based interface that you saw today. Uh, for that, we haven't announced any specific pricing, but we'll ensure that it's affordable for companies given the size. With enterprise, they're more interested in direct API level access to our systems uh, because they have the engineering resources to build out and integrate it themselves. Uh, with them, we're also not ready to announce pricing yet, but it's in line with the value we bring. I imagine the enterprise that use, uh, enterprises that use uh, browser-based access, you can't, you can't solve for that, right? You need an application on what's the device. What's actually great is that even if a person accesses uh, an enterprise system through a single sign-on provider, say, on, on the web, uh, we're able to check the mobile phone's location during that time. So we are able to protect even web-based access. Interesting. Neat. 
Have you tried have you uh, tried penetrating your own system and see the vulnerabilities of your own system? We absolutely have. So we have some uh, security background. Uh, Wendell's experience is uh, prior in the defense industry. Uh, and I've written secure cloud software for Harvard, which is now used by MIT as well. Uh, so we have, we have some experience in the space. Uh, we've definitely looked into it, and we'll be continuing to perform penetration testing on our own systems over time. Can you imagine a lot of the usage will be people trying to lock other folks out of specific buildings, or do you think it's mostly countrywide? Most of it's countrywide. In fact, that's 98% of the problem. If you can just identify that somebody's not in the U.S. when they should be, uh, when they're accessing a critical system or critical company data, yeah. you can stop those 98% of hacks. So some of the companies have come to us and asked if we can prevent competitors and specific, specific other office buildings from accessing any of their systems. Uh, but for us, we see the biggest opportunity in just blocking out access by country. Okay. So since, since you, you can't reveal pricing at this stage, uh, how, how would you describe the size of the business? Where, do you, where does the business go? Um, and who, who, who competes with you? Yeah, so uh, there are a number of companies in the cybersecurity space, uh, and there's a good reason. There's $450 billion in annual fraud. So it's absolutely huge. It's staggering. In healthcare alone, there's, trillion, there's more than a trillion dollars in annual billing, and a huge amount of that is due to fraudulent insurance claims being filed. So our first customers have, uh, that have come to us are uh, insurance companies, healthcare insurance companies, in the financial sector, uh, companies in defense and companies in uh, the technology industry as well. In terms of size, we've had two global fortune, uh, global 1,000 companies reach out to us while we were backstage. So I, I want to go back to the GPS thing. You can, said you can detect it if someone's spoofing it with Android, for example. Mm -hmm. Can you get into how you do that? Is it like yeah. a skyhook kind of thing where you're looking at the Wi-Fi hotspots nearby or... So that's actually part of our secret sauce, and part of our, a lot of companies do think we're using I guess the secret sauce? <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a lot of our companies, a lot of other companies did think that we were using uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, looking at SSIDs or MAC addresses or um, any number of other signals, timing, for instance. It's none of those things. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's pretty new. Nobody's ever seen this uh, from anybody that we've spoken to, and it's uh, very exciting. Fair enough. So do you see this as completely, uh, uh, um, Getting rid of the need to have two-factor authentication, so does this replace two-factor? And it, For a lot of companies, it will. For a lot of companies, two-factor authentication is uh, unliked by the users. And in most cases, if they're not protecting extremely critical data, probably not completely necessary. Uh, for a lot of companies, they're very happy with their two-factor authentication schemes, and we actually integrate into those directly. So you can layer this on top and use this as an additional factor. And oftentimes, it's the most critical one. What, what is the experience like for your typical employee, right? Someone, boss hands me something, says, I got to do this. What do I do on a daily basis? Anything? You log in using your normal username and password. That's it. All right. And what if you're an employee and you fly to Paris and you forget to tell your boss? <laughs> <laughs> and you still want to pretend that you're at home in Palo Alto trying to do your spreadsheet? <laughs> <laughs> this is just, you know, hypothetical. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, might get, you might get busted. Uh, you're, <laughs> in that case, <laughs> the, the IT director is probably going to receive notification that uh, you're trying to access the system from Paris. You'll probably receive a phone call uh, to confirm that that's happening right now and that that's really you. And once they can confirm that, they'll grant you temporary access from within France. Don't you think end, do you think end users, the employees at the company, might balk at this in any way because of privacy concerns? That's absolutely something we've looked at and we're taking extremely seriously. So we're subject to audits. Uh, anybody can look at the data we keep. In fact, we're happy to let, allow the company to keep all the data itself on site behind their company firewall. Uh, for us, as a security business, our focus is on minimizing the amount of data that we hold uh, because each bit of data, especially identifying data, is incredibly dangerous to us. You know, it would strike me that the location-based, your, your the ability to spoof location and your solve for that is sort of the critical piece of the puzzle here because people have been, hackers have been indifferent to the location tracking issue to date mm -hmm. um, because nobody's doing what you're doing. And if you get widely deployed, that's gonna, that will change very fast. And so it'd be, you know, it, it's your secret source, but I'd love to get a better understanding of that because my ability just, uh, yeah, to spoof location would seem to be the flaw in this. 
True. Wendell, do you want to? Sure. I mean, it's it's actually pretty hard to uh, spoof GPS. You can you can spoof GPS, of course, just with Android, as we talked about. Uh, but there's we're looking ahead, and we're already anticipating uh, the next wave of solutions, and we'll make some other announcements later this year to address that exact point. But it's actually GPS is actually. Uh, difficult to, to hack directly with iPhone. It, with Android, it's much easier. We can detect that. But there's other solutions as well that we'll be announcing later this year. But I still have to have your device, right? In order, uh, if I'm understanding properly, in order to you know, spoof uh, or pretend to be you, I'd still have to have your device so that you're getting that particular ping and still would be within the, that country, right? No, because I can pretend that I'm you. I can pretend that I'm in the US. But I have to have a piece of software that's running on my phone, so you'd have to have my phone to, in order to, to access. That's, yeah, that's correct. Okay. You would, you would. So yeah. it's actually, spoofing location itself is not sufficient. Yeah. So I have to physically steal the device too. Yes. Correct. Which that's I'm holding possible. onto right now. Do, do, you, do you see, do you envision the government using this? Can I borrow your phone? Uh, <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, the use case uh, along those lines is protecting documents, critical documents around military bases. It's so one example use case. Now, in order to gain access to even a cloud-based file, something hosted on the internet, you have to be on a military base itself uh, to prove that it's you. So there's incredible demand, not just within the corporate side, but within uh, government military as well. Yeah, there's, right. a, there's a lot of headlines, of course, that we've all read, uh, read in the newspapers about hacking, and we would solve many of those, and many of those companies who have been hacked have been in touch with us, and we're in touch with and Insane working with multiple companies. <laughs> All right, so we're out of time. Great job, you guys. That was Cloudware.